do subscribe to ikeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos hello friends now we are going to derive an equation which is based on change in enthalpy that is nothing but delta h is equals to delta u plus p delta v so how can we derive this equation let us talk about it so friends here we are going to talk about uh, the change in enthalpy and we are going to derive an equation which is delta h is equals to delta u plus p delta v but since we are talking about the change in enthalpy so the first initial and the final state uh, of the enthalpy should be uh, uh, said in a very clear manner and for that thing we have that let h1 and h2 be the enthalpies of the initial state and the final state uh, respectively uh, then the change in the enthalpy can be written as delta h which is nothing but the h2 minus h1 and in this case h2 is for the final state while h1 is the enthalpy for the initial state so in this case what we have got it as when h delta h is equals to h2 minus h1 so this let me make it as equation 1 so this is what we have got to know now so now talking about the next thing so because the enthalpy is been related to the internal energy as well as the uh, pressure volume so in this case uh, let u1 p1 and v1 be the internal energy the pressure and volume of the initial state so therefore according to the definition that we have got to know for the enthalpy and we have got to know that enthalpy is nothing but the sum up of the internal energy as well as pressure and volume so in that case uh, the h1 will be is equals to u1 plus p1 v1 so this is the equation that we have got for the initial state uh, when we are talking about enthalpy so let me make it as equation 2 so now moving on further thing so what we have got to know that uh, let uh, u2 p2 and v2 be the internal energy pressure and volume of the final state so in this case again according to the uh, uh, that is the uh, definition of enthalpy we have got to know that h2 is equals to u2 plus p2 v2 so in this case let me make it as equation number three so in this case equation number two and equation number three are been obtained but yes the equation number one is still there with us which is nothing but h2 minus h1 so what we are going to do is we are going to substitute the values of uh, equation two and equation three in equation one and let us see what is the thing that we are going to get so equating Uh, substituting uh, the values of 2 and 3 uh, in equation 1 what we are going to get is we know that uh, delta h is nothing but h2 minus h1 but for h2 what we have got we have got h2 as u2 plus p2 p2 so this is what we have got minus for h1 we have u1 plus p1 v1 so now what we are going to do we are going to um, open this bracket and let us see what is the equation that we could get so therefore this is u2 plus p2 v2 minus of u1 and again minus into plus that is nothing but minus itself so minus p1 v1 so let us arrange the uh, terms uh, which are related to each other so in this case because u2 and u1 are related to each other so what i am going to do is i am uh, keeping them aside in this case and i am keeping p2 v2 minus p1 v1 together so in this case what we have got to know that uh, we have got a value like uh, u2 minus u1 as well as p, uh, p2 v2 minus p1 v1 but talking about the pressure this kind of process is been done in an isothermal process uh, sorry uh, it has been done in a uh, process where the pressure has been kept constant so in this case what we could see as if even though if we have uh, pressure p1 or pressure p2 the both can be said to be as pressure p because it has been uh, it has been maintained constant throughout the whole process so this equation that we have got now that is delta h which is equals to u2 minus u1 plus p2 v2 minus p1 v1 can be written as delta h which is equals to that is u2 minus u1 plus instead of p2 v uh, v2 we we'll write p v2 minus of again p v1 
so in this case the pressure can be uh, can be taken as common thing so what i could get is u2 minus u1 plus pressure v2 minus v1 so this is what we get but this u2 minus u1 is nothing but the change in internal energy and the change in internal energy is been denoted by delta u and talking about v2 minus v1 v2 minus v1 is nothing but again the change in volume that we will observe that is the final uh, volume minus the initial volume so for this thing what i could write it as we could write it as delta h is equals to because u2 minus u1 is nothing but delta u and I have taken out P as a common thing and V2 minus U1 is nothing but delta V. So this is how we have proved or we have derived an equation which means delta H is equals to delta U plus P delta V. And again this P delta V is nothing but work itself. So what does the this uh, derivation says? This derivation says that if you change, uh, uh, if we have a change in enthalpy, then that enthalpy is been accompanied by the change in internal energy as well as the work done on the system or by the system on the surrounding. So in this case, this is how we have proved uh, what will be the change in uh, enthalpy. But we could do this thing uh, to a further limit also. How? let me tell you that thing uh, because in this case p and v the both are being used and the both are being utilized suppose if this process takes place for a uh, gaseous reaction in which a gaseous reactant is being reacted uh, to gas two or more gaseous reactants they are being reacted and are giving a gaseous products so in this case what we are going to observe again there will be the change in volume because the gases are being reacted with each other so there will be uh, increase in volume or there would be decrease in volume so the volume will change but uh, talking about uh, the number of moles also that we are going to talk about because why because here pressure and volume are being used so since we know that is pv is equals to nrt again the pressure volume is related to an ideal gas equation that we know as pv is equals to nrt so when we are taking the two reactants and uh, in this case the pressure is being said to be constant and now we could see that the volume will change and uh, yes the number of moles of the gaseous reactant and the gaseous product will also change depending on the which kind of reaction that uh, it has so suppose i could uh, make the p into v as uh, for p1 v1 i could write it as n1 r into t this n1 r into t it implies that we are talking about uh, uh, the chi the the volume uh, when it has uh, the number of moles of the gas as n1 and when we are talking about when we are talking about uh, v2 that is what would be the number of moles of the product that we have after the volume is changed from v1 to v2 so in that case the number of moles of gaseous product will be n2 while the n1 is the number of moles of the reactant species that we have the gaseous species that we have introduced uh, uh, on the reactant side so this is what we have got that is p v1 is equals to n1 rt while p v2 is equals to n2 rt so this two equations that we have with us right now so uh, let me name it as uh, three and uh, four so these two equations can be substituted in the above equation as you could see that is delta h is equals to u2 minus u1 plus uh, p uh, pv2 minus pv1 so let us substitute these things and let us uh, uh, so i will name this equation also as a suppose suppose a, because this is necessary for us to derive because here uh, from here we have derived the thing that we have uh, got to know and uh, that we have to prove but uh, we could substitute these values and let us see what is the further thing that we could do so substituting equation 3 and 4 in a so let us see what we could get so what do we have is we have delta h is equals to u2 minus u1 which is nothing but delta u so instead of uh, p2 v2 what i'm going to substitute is i'm going to substitute the equation number four that we have that is n2 rt minus that of uh, the p1 v1 that we have it is nothing but n1 rt so now the common thing that we are going to do is we could remove the rt as the common thing and uh, what we are uh, getting to know is uh, when rt is been common and here we could see n2 minus n1 
So now what we are going to do is we know that n2 minus n1 is nothing but the difference between the number of moles of the uh, product and the uh, number of moles of the reactant. So in that case I would write it as delta u is equals to delta n into rt and r is nothing but the gas constant and t is the temperature as you know. So therefore this delta h is clearly indicating that It is the sum up of the change in internal energy as well as uh, the change in the number of moles of gas into R into T. So this is how we have made a statement for both the derivations in this case that is for delta H when it has been equals to delta U plus P delta V as well as delta H which is equals to delta U plus delta NRT. So this is the derivation that we have derived. So let me give you a small uh, example further also so that it would be very much because these are the common terms that are being associated with derivation with this kind of derivation so if we talk about the work done during this process and uh, talking about the work that we know we know work is being denoted by w is equals to minus p delta v that we know very clearly so in this case so i would write it as p is equals to v2 minus v1 so in this case minus p v2 is equals to minus into minus that is plus p1 v1 so therefore in this case uh, talking about uh, the p v2 and uh, we recently we have did a equation on that and we have got to know that is uh, it will be equals to minus and because this is minus so i am making it as minus that n2 rt while that of the p v1 it will be n1 rt so therefore I will make it a common thing of RT and what I would get is basically here N1 minus N2. So again this will be a kind of uh, the difference between uh, that we could see that is N1 minus N2 that is nothing but the delta N. But what happens uh, suppose uh, if we have or we, we usually denote uh, uh, the work by delta n which is nothing but n2 minus n1. So I could write this equation uh, in this manner also like uh, minus rt which is equals to uh, delta n which is nothing but n2 minus n1. So this is rt into delta n. So if been, uh, we are relating this now with work and the work has been done on the system suppose. So in this case what we could see, suppose if the number of moles of the gas is comparatively more than, than that of the number of moles of the reactant. So in this case what will happen since the number of moles of the gas has been more compared to that of the uh, reactant that means the gas will expand or the number of particles will uh, be more in the gaseous state which means the gas has, uh, has been expanded and this will clearly indicate that the work has been done on the uh, surrounding by the system and that is the reason the work will be negative. But what if the uh, value of N2 is less than that of the N1. So this N2 minus N1 will have a negative value and this negative value into negative value will be positive. So making the work to be positive which will make the work on the system by the surrounding. So these are the few criteria that, and, uh, that we have got to know. And what will happen is if the number of moles of the reactant side and the product are be the same. So if N2 minus N1 is uh, basically zero means there is no change in uh, the number of moles during the conversion of reactant into product. So that means no work has been done in that process. So we could make uh, a thing uh, to know that uh, this delta H has given a various information to us related to the uh, pressure volume work as well as related to the number of moles of gas also. So this is how we have derived an equation. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have understood more concept of this by using this derivation. Share this video with your friends and yes don't forget to subscribe to channel. Thank you so much.